morning. And welcome to worship at our Savior Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Kristen. I'm spinning around because we are in a different space. And we are starting our worship uh, remembering and giving thanksgiving for our baptism. So I invite you to stand and face the font with us. We need your presence on the long road, Lord. The road between fear and hope. The road between the place where all is lost and the place of resurrection. Like the disciples walking the road to Emmaus, we are in need of your company. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Whose, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are giving new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of this new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower your witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve to drink justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. And we join in singing our gathering hymn, number 522, We Gather at Your Table.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. O risen Christ, on the road to Emmaus, you were the disciples' companion. Be at our side on the journey of faith on life's pathways and at every encounter, engender our compassion so we may welcome others and listen to their stories. Kindle anew the desire to proclaim your word. May it illumine us and may our hearts burn to bear witness to it. May your Holy Spirit teach us the art of explaining scripture and open our eyes to recognize you and grant us the courage to become vulnerable so that our siblings may know you through us and that we may know you through them. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, What should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are... And uh, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testifies with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship in this breaking and bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they were spent, uh, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts. In the praising God and having the goodwill of all the people, and day by day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Be Our psalm this morning is a part of Psalm 116. I will read the uh, 
the uh, verses that are not in bold print and uh, you respond in the bold print verses. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O oh Lord, I truly am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving in all the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Our second reading is from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile, you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but of the precious blood of, of Christ like that of the lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. According to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory now, on that same day, when Jesus had appeared, appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with them, talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. And moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at his tomb early this morning and they did not find his body there. And they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. 
And Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Now as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, he blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I invite any kids or kids or young at heart to come on up for some time together. Good morning, everybody. Who's really happy to have to wear sweaters and shoes and jackets again? None of us? No, me neither. You guys can sit right here if you want. Yep, that's okay. So I wonder how often you might feel kind of sad, kind of disappointed about stuff. Do you feel sad pretty often? Like once a week, maybe? Maybe once a day? Sometimes? What do you, who do you go to when you feel kind of sad? You go to your room? That's a safe place to go. That's where I like to go to. Do any of you like to talk to mom or dad or one of your siblings? Or you like to be alone? Yeah, you like to be alone when you're feeling kind of sad? You know what? I do too. And I think we just heard about some disciples who also were feeling kind of sad and wanted to be alone. That's why they were walking away. But something happened, and they were reminded that they actually weren't alone, and they found some comfort in something that they usually do. They found comfort because they found out that Jesus was with them <coughs> while they were eating a meal together, something they do all the time, and probably when they needed to feel comfortable. Well, I brought some things, because I couldn't bring my favorite foods, because there's too many of them. But I found some of my favorite things that when I was your age kept me feeling comfortable, and when I needed to be alone in my room, these guys were my companions, and they remind me how much I am loved. So can I introduce you to my friends? So this is Gear. His name is Gear, because apparently that's, I couldn't say the word bear when I was a kid. So I called him Gear, and so he is Gear. And this is my friend Snoofsy, who I got when I was in second grade, and he holds a remarkable likeness to my actual living dog now, but I didn't realize that until like two years ago. <laughs> so this is Snoofsy. I don't even let you, you guys can hold on to them if you want. You can pass them around. Give them a little extra love. And then this is maybe my favorite of all my things. Because this is the blanket I have had since I was a tiny, tiny baby. The actual blanket, because even though it has some rips and holes, my mom tried to give me a different one, and I didn't want it, because this one had all the right smells and all the right feels. And when I'm feeling sad, even now at 40, yes, I still grab this guy. And this is why. It has a hole. And you bet, it fits over my head. <laughs> and it gives me strength. So now I have a cape. And my cape's name is Bubby. <laughs> so, 
I share these because when you are feeling sad, when you are feeling scared, you have things you do for comfort. You maybe eat familiar foods, you talk to familiar people, or you just go and hang out in your room. But I bet you have some friends, too, that help you feel comfortable and help you feel like you can handle everything. When we come to worship and we eat at that table, when we come and eat that body and bread, that is also a reminder of comfort that no matter what else is going on in the world, we can trust that Jesus shows up there and shows up for us. So I invite you to remember with comfort the things that you love and remember that Jesus is always with you, even if we can't always see him like we see our things. Because I will confess, they do hang out in a box often these days. But when I'm having a really bad day, you bet I pull this out and I run around my house. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So, I encourage you to find your comfort things, and if you don't have a comfort thing, then maybe now's a good time to create a comfort thing. Okay? Can you guys do that? Awesome. Thank you for hanging out, and thank you for letting me introduce you to my friends. You guys can go back to your big people now. And yes, I'm keeping this on. No, we're just gonna let them hang out here. They don't often see the light of day too much anymore, um, so we're just gonna let them hang out for a little bit. Grace and peace to you in the name of the triune God, creator, savior, and spirit, amen. So I wonder what some of your expectations are. We all have them about a multitude of things because there is something within each of us that imagines and dreams and hopes for whatever is to come. And I'm not talking necessarily about the eternal somewhere that we all hope for, but really just about what is to come in this life that we inhabit. Our expectations are built both upon our previous experiences, but also what we dream about. So we're always kind of stuck in this limbo of memory and hope for the unknown, and it's hard to really, truly, simply just be here in the present as it is. The present is kind of this, that limbo space, right? Now, sometimes we are conscious of what we are expecting. Like, I know it sounds weird, but at the beginning of a school near, I know we're near the end, but at the beginning, we know what's coming. We know we can prepare with new notebooks and pens and fresh printer ink. We go to meet our teachers, we get introductory emails from our professors. We know what's coming on when we go to a doctor's appointment. We know roughly what is going to be happening. But even more so, our expectations of our daily living just simply exist within us. And we only realize what they were, either through deep reflection, which not many of us do, or when something shows up and disrupts them. And it's often without warning. And honestly, it's usually never something we would choose when our expectations most acutely are disturbed, whether a diagnosis or an unexpected phone call announcing a death or the delivery of divorce papers. In those moments, everything around us that felt comfortable and familiar and safe suddenly feels foreign and unrecognizable, unmanageable, and maybe even terrifying. These disciples that we meet in Luke's gospel account of this journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus and then back to Jerusalem are in the midst of that kind of disorienting time where their expectations and hopes and dreams and visions have been ripped away. For they have spent their whole lives dreaming and hoping and praying for a Messiah, someone to come who is gonna turn the world upside down and change their circumstances get the Roman Empire out of Israel, for Israel to finally receive the redemption it has longed for so desperately after generations of occupation and external authority. That is what they have been hoping for. And that's actually what Luke laid out at the very beginning of his gospel, which we heard at Christmas when Mary sings her Magnificat while visiting Elizabeth. This hope for Messiah that she is baking in her womb, this is what their hope is. 
The God, you have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered the proud in their conceits. You have deposed the mighty from their thrones. You have raised the lowly to high places. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your, of your servant Israel, and you are fulfilling the promise you made to Sarah and Abraham and their descendants forever. That is a lot of hope to put on one person. <laughs> but that is who they were looking for. That is who they had hoped that Jesus would be, this almighty game changer. And while Jesus did really amazing, wonderful things in his living ministry, he healed wounded hearts and bodies and souls. He did challenge the status quo and he planted some seeds of kind of a revolution, but he was still killed. And he was seemingly taken down by the powers that still are there. And to paraphrase my good friend, Obi-Wan Kenobi, this turns out it wasn't the Messiah they were looking for. And so racked with overwhelming grief, as Cleopas and this other unnamed disciple begin this seven mile trek out of Jerusalem, nothing is as they hoped it would be. They are returning to where they were from, sad and alone, everything still the way it always was. It just felt heavier now. And never mind that they've also heard this story from Mary of Magdala and Joanna and the other Mary that the tomb was empty and the angels spoke to them claiming that Jesus was alive and that he'd even told them and that this was what was going to happen before they even got to Jerusalem. Peter had also kind of believed them. He went and saw the tomb empty for himself, but I mean, come on. The tomb was empty and Jesus' body could have been anywhere. There's no way. So perhaps it's because their previous experience that dead people stay dead, that disappointment was inevitable, or that their expectations were dashed. Or maybe, and I'm just guessing here, that these disciples that we have not really heard of before as hearers of the gospel, they, we don't know them until this story, Maybe it's that these followers of Jesus had never actually been that up close to Jesus or as personal with him to really recognize him. I mean, they go and tell the other 11, so we know he's not, they're not part of the inner, inner circle. In any case, it never crosses their mind that this stranger that joins them, that asks to hear their story and then helps them see the wider goodness of God, there's no way it could be Jesus even as he does what Jesus does best. Now, I'm sure some of us have kind of had similar sorts of experiences where you see somebody out in the world and you have no idea who they are even though you know them, right? I can remember a moment about 10 years ago. I was a few months into my first call in Upper Michigan where I was serving three small congregations in the Western UP. The closest and only grocery store in the county was a 20 minute drive from where I lived. And so I was intently looking for something when someone called out, hey pastor, and I had no idea who it was. This was a small town, okay, and I had no idea who they were. They didn't even look familiar to me, and I was embarrassed when I had to ask who they were. Thankfully, thankfully, it was someone who was not offended by this. They compassionately understood that because I was seeing them outside of where I usually saw them, which was probably in the third row of the pew of that one church that I was at every other week, they understood and they helped me realize kind of who they were. And so the next time I saw them in worship, I was like, oh yeah, I, grocery store, I gotcha. But it's happened. It's, it happened in the last couple of months living here where I have met people on Zoom or in one circumstance, and then I see them in a completely other, and I'm like, I don't, nothing. I got nothing. Anyway, I think we can understand that there are many overlapping systems and experiences that may have kept these disciples from recognizing their leader in their midst. That is, until, until they invited this stranger who had done so much for so many other strangers until they invited him into this moment of hospitality and community. 
It was until their context became familiar again, until they were in a place where they felt safe and comfortable and maybe could relax a little, until they did something they had done many times before together in many other places, but sure, this thing, this sharing of a meal and the process of which they did it was familiar. And in that ritual, as they shared this meal, offered a blessing of the bread and breaking it together, that is when they finally are brought back to here and now. That is when their hearts and minds and senses realize that they have always been in the presence of this risen one. And yeah, Jesus sure wasn't behaving as they had hoped the Messiah would act, but his love for them, his divine presence was again, more than they could have hoped for or dreamed. And Jesus never scolded them for not recognizing him. He simply loved them and joined them and was present with them for as long as they needed. And that actually makes this Messiah pretty radical because he didn't come with sword and fury and fight, but with compassion and love and patience. And in that way, Jesus shows up for us too. When our hearts are heavy with grief and disappointment, Jesus shows up and speaks love through our holy meals that we share together whenever and wherever we gather. Jesus will always show up and be this embodied presence of divine and holy and overwhelming love wherever we are, breaking through our expectations and our perfectly planned daily lives. Jesus will show up not just in this place and time of worship where we do practice rituals of discipleship, but also anywhere and through any means necessary. And often, I dare say, beyond our wildest imaginations and expectations. And that is part of the revolution God has in store for us. One that isn't dominated by power and structure, but by mutual and reciprocal love with and for God, love with and for one another, love with and for ourselves. And in that, I invite you later on today or this week to look at all of our readings again, because they all kind of zero in on this, that God's own self that we know through Jesus joins us on the road and in our communal love and care for one another that God loves us so dearly that we are invited to constantly reciprocate that love. And we can do that as we are and in community together. And we can trust that this love shows up in water and in bread and wine, body and blood, that this is the promise that we cling to and that clings to us, that even when everything else feels suddenly unrecognizable and scary, that this is where we always can find peace and hope and belonging in the name of the risen one. Amen. You are invited to stand as you so wish as we join in our uh, hymn of the day, number 377, verses 1, 2, and 5.
Will you please join me in professing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and the joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. We pray for peace in our world, especially in Sudan, Ukraine, and Israel, and for a calming of tensions between North Korea and its neighbors. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. We give thanks for our national parks, forests, and wilderness areas, and for their continued preservation. Strengthen those who safeguard threatened land and water. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. We pray for survivors of sexual assault and abuse, especially in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Help, help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. And we give thanks for public and private agencies that provide support and care for sexual assault and abuse survivors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day, especially Jason, Phil, Shirley, Linda, Rosalie, Adele, Jeff, Denise, Victoria, Jennifer, Jeanette, Suzanne, Shelby, Kevin, Nancy, Anne, Mary, Sean, Mayor Dennis, Jane, Robert M., Tom, Peter H., Ruth, Dorothy, Megan, and Crystal. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lament over mass shootings in Louisville, Kentucky, Dadeville, Alabama, Phoenix, Arizona, Newark, and Patterson, New Jersey, 
Waianae, Hawaii, Northridge, California, Keysville, Georgia, Biloxi, Mississippi, Baltimore, Maryland, and Bowdoin, Maine. Bring your healing care to those who mourn, to those who were injured, like Ralph Yarrow, and to the shooter Andrew Lester of Kansas City, Missouri. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment and share that peace around you with those people around you um, as you feel comfortable doing so. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. Thank you for joining us. No matter where you are, peace be with you at this time. As you finish up, you may be seated. Those of you viewing at home, continue to be seated. <laughs> Wonderful to see you all here this morning. And just a word of thanks um, for all the time, talents, and treasures that you continue to share with our Savior Lutheran Church and all that you do to help us be the body of Christ in this area and throughout the world as we continue to reach out through our affiliated ELCA ministries. Um, as we continue with our offering and our meal, there will be a time for us to commune up here as well as those, a time for those at home to commune and anyone who would like to commune in their pew, and then we'll invite those to come forward um, to receive the elements at the altar. There is grape juice within the inner circle of each tray and also um, gluten-free wafers. If you would prefer those, just let us know as you come forward. And now let us continue with our offering prayer. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth in the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We please stand as you wish, as you are able. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. i uh -huh. 
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, O Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, with your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars. We praise you, O God. Blessed blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome at this table, so come. Come up to this table, which now extends into our homes. You who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you like the rest of us who have failed. Come. It is Jesus who invites us to meet him here. You may be seated. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Anyone who would like to commune in your pew or those at home, please prepare the bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And now the grape juice or the wine that you have. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now we invite those who would like to come forward.
body of Christ broken for you. Friends. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Carol, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you, bud. Megan, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you, Andrew. Grant the Lord bless you now and always. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Kristen, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Ted, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Matt, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Will you please stand as you are willing and able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. We pray, gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And an invitation as we go into our week after hearing our scripture, our word, after we worship. Search for a comfortable place. And sometimes those comfortable places aren't so comfortable. But when we invite others to come along with us, God is present. The face of Jesus will greet you. Our God is a God that does things beyond our expectations. He's found in the comfortable. Or she. Will you please join us in singing our sending hymn, I Come With Joy, hymn number 482.
Once again, receive this blessing. May God, who comes to us in the things of this world, bless your awareness and be in your receiving. May Christ, who knows you with deepest love, bless you with hope, trust, and compassion for yourself and for others. And may the Spirit, who perceives what is and what may yet be, bless you with assurance that you are not alone. May the sacred three bless you with wholeness and open you to wonder. Amen. Amen. Will you please be seated for a few announcements? Pastor takes a week vacation and...